Hello and welcome. I'm Dr. Troy Munson on Revealing Wholeness. Today we're going on a lesson, uh, the lesson number four, and we're going to do a bit of review at this point. I was really interested, Doc, because we've done some very in-depth podcasts concerning the mind. And, okay, I'm not the smartest guy in the world, but why are we delving into thought processes and, and things that the mind controls us? Well, I mean, it's, it's a great understanding, I guess, with the mind that everything that happens to us in our, in our experience here on this planet and things that, oh, seem to be repeating themselves over and over, this is how the brain works. And if we're going to start going somewhere new, if we're going to actually get healing, if we're going to actually start trying to do something different with our life instead of the, the things that we continually get over and over, we want to be able to reprogram the mind or rather unprogram it from what has been happening to it. Does that make sense? Well, it sort of makes sense. So like the idea for today okay, is everything that you see right now in this room, you're seeing from the past. And it seems like it's right now, like you're looking at it for the first time. But if we look at a wall, mm -hmm. what, what does our, our brain instantly think of the wall? Oh, I've seen those before. Right. Okay. Um, they've been many colors. This one happens to be off-white. I get it. Um, it seems to be bumpy. Oh, yeah, I've seen walls with different texture. Um, I've felt walls. I've even run into walls. I've fallen over and hit walls. You know, I've punched a wall. You know, all these thoughts come to us, and this is all past-derived. Imagine if you'd never seen a wall before. Well, then you wouldn't know, would you? You wouldn't know. It would be completely brand new, but we don't operate that way because the mind continually categorizes things. And so most of what we see, we live in the past. And so this is the first time that we're, we're starting in this process of dealing with time. And time is a tricky thing because time doesn't technically exist. It doesn't exist. Well, think about it. All we have is this hmm. present moment. Okay. You, can, you can measure time as it passes. With a watch or a calendar or the season. Sure. You can plan in the future. You can remember the past. Mm -hmm. But ultimately, all you have is right now. So, you know, I, I laugh because I see people where they're right now on their wrist. You know, they'll look at their watch. What time is it? And they'll hold up. It's now. It's now. <laughs> it's always now. That's, that's interesting. And it's true. It is. And so if we can begin to recognize. So let's say you're sitting there wherever you are listening to this podcast. And as you look around yourself, you might see a door. And that door is, you're going to say things like, I see only the past in this door. Uh, you might look at your phone and you say, I see only the past in this phone. You may have a table next to you. I see only the past in this table. Maybe you're driving listening to this and you see uh, a fast food restaurant. I see only the past in this restaurant. You know, because let's say that you got food poisoning at a similar restaurant. So now your brain's going through all the past experiences you had at these restaurants, and yet, you're, yet again, you're living in the past. So your brain is continually drawing you out of the now and pulling you in the past. And as we go through more lessons in the future, you'll start to understand why not living in the past and living now becomes really, really important. Because we don't, we're going to try to start figuring out that if I'm in the now, I no longer see my future as a representation of the past, but I also live in full creativity, that I don't try to dictate events, but now I can actually be directed by my inner guidance that's trying to guide me towards the right thing. You know, my friend died of cancer that had this, and now I have this cancer, and now I'm going to die. Is that a useful thought for you? Now, most of them are going to say absolutely not. So if we want to go somewhere new in terms of health, in terms of financial well-being, in terms of relationships, in terms of just our life experience, we have to really let go of a lot of the past things and say, you know what, I don't know what a table is for. And that's what we did at the beginning. We said, hey, the reason, it is the reason why nothing that I see means anything. It is the reason why um, I have given everything I see all the meaning it has for me. It's the reason why I do not understand anything I see. It's the reason why my thoughts don't mean anything. And it's the reason why I'm never upset for the reason I think, or I'm never upset because I see something that is not there. Those are lessons that we've gone through in the past. And now we're beginning to understand that all those things that we keep looking at, we're seeing from a past perspective. And so this new, today's new lesson is, I see only the past. 
And so I see only the past and everything that I see. And so you can name things specifically. If you do it two or three times a day, that would be wonderful. Now, the next half of this lesson that, that you can work on toward until next week is my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. So first of all, we have, I see only the past. And now I realize that every thought that enters my head all day long is pretty much my preoccupation with past. So I now have to start to begin to let go of that. So there's only one thing that we can really say that's true about the past and that it is not here. You know, think about that. The past is not here. Now we might look around us and we're technically living in the past by everything we look at and see because it draws us into the past because we think we know what everything is. We don't allow things to be new and fresh and unique. We just say, yeah, 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 whatever, whatever, whatever. I've, I've been there, done that. And so those are things that we're going to try to, to draw away as we go through that. So this next exercise probably should be done with your eyes closed. And so whatever you begin to start thinking about, we want you to analyze all those thoughts that come in and say, you know, I, I seem to be thinking about uh, what I need to do for my child's sports today. Or I seem to be thinking about my car needing an oil change. Or I seem to be thinking about lunch. I seem to be thinking about all these different things. So as you do mind searching for maybe 15, 20 seconds, maybe 45 seconds max, and begin to say, you know, I seem to be thinking about blank. And then you're going to end the practice period this time with, but my mind is only preoccupied with past thoughts. And so we want to at least acknowledge two or three times throughout the day, maybe up to five times, that you, you know, and things that irritate you are really awesome. I seem to be thinking about angry things. I seem to be thinking about upsetting things. I seem to be thinking about the massive traffic that's sitting in front of me. All those are definitely fair game, but always end on, but my mind is preoccupied with past thoughts. And so that's where we're going today. Is that, does that kind of help, Bill? That helped, yes. Okay. And so... As, as we go through this, I'm going to interject some other things. Very shortly, I want to talk about judgment and how how and why do we judge things. So here we are looking at everything in this room, realizing that I've judged everything that I see, but how it brings about fear. And fear is something that we want to certainly let go of because fear is really, if, if we want to say there's an opposite to love, it's fear. And so as we begin to handle fear more and more, we begin to let love have its place inside of us. Love does not afraid, it's not harmed, and it's not harmful. It's joyful, it's kind, it's pleasant. And as we hold those thoughts more and more, our, the cells of our body begin to generate the light that is them instead of the sickness and disease that comes from our erroneous thinking. We weren't created like this, we weren't meant to, to continue to have all these, these thoughts like this, and so we're little by little undoing the mind's ability to keep itself trapped. And to let go of the past, let go of our thoughts, and begin to, to reach for those, those greater thoughts that are us, that is light, that is love, that is us. And that is where healing can really truly begin to thrive. And I was just getting massage today, and massage therapist reiterated an important aspect to me and said, healed people heal people. And ultimately that's what we want to do, because healed people do heal people. So we have to heal ourselves first in order to take the others to the next step. And we don't walk this journey alone. We walk it together, hand in hand. And that's where we're all, we're all heading. So anyways, until next time, it's been a wonderful time today. And please use these lessons. And as we go, we're going to keep advancing and moving forward and getting into some real wild things and letting the mind undo itself. So until then, I'm Dr. Troy Munson on Revealing Wholeness. This concludes another episode of Revealing Wholeness with Dr. Troy Munson. If you have any questions concerning this podcast or others, you can reach Dr. Munson by email at chiroman, that's C-H-I-R-O-M-A-N, at dr dot com. Or you can call him at his office during office operation hours at 360-893-8586. This show is sponsored by Infinity Whole Health on the Disruptors Podcast Network.
The information on this podcast from Dr. Troy Munson is meant to educate the listener on a variety of health issues. It is not meant to diagnose or treat any conditions.